a company named Uniper and we have about 75 hydropower plants all over Sweden. So we're quite familiar with this topic. Uh, uh, and I would like to start with the outlook, European outlook. Uh, we have touched that subject already today, Bart and, and also Joko has talked a little bit about it. Um, but as you can see, there are a great number of, of dams all over Europe. And not only dams, there are also other barriers that we know about. Uh, but we do not know exactly how many there are. Um, I mean, I'm involved in another project, AMBER. Some of you are involved in that too, uh, where one of the objectives is to registrate where we have the barriers in, in, uh, in the rivers we have in Europe. Um, also, most dams are small, less than 10 meters high. Um, there is an estimation, very uncertain, of course, that we have something between uh, 0.6 and 1.8 million dams in Europe. And uh, as uh, Bart already mentioned, many of these are obsolete today. They are not representing any special value for the society. And I don't, I don't think it's controversial to say that these, these dams can be removed. Um, probably the, the number of barriers are, is even higher. Uh, but so far, dam removal has been focused on these obsolete dams and small dams. Uh, if you look at the situation here in Sweden, I saw another picture today actually with less dams than, this, than that, but uh, the estimation is that we have about 11,000 dams. Uh, and we can compare that to the uh, little bit more than 2,000 hydropower plants that we have in Sweden. Of course, some of these power plants have more than one dam. But I would say that the majority of the dams in Sweden are not connected to hydropower. They have other services. Uh, and you can also see the um, size of the dams on the, uh, on the map to the left. Most of the really big dams are situated in the northern part of Sweden, in the uh, biggest regulated rivers that we have here. Why are we not removing all dams? Well, of course, um, there is a value of the dam, probably. At least there was a value from the beginning. So we have to start to ask yourself, what is the value today and what is the value of this dam in the future? For us working with hydropower, it's quite obvious that uh, hydropower dams serve a certain value for the society, not only as energy uh, generators, uh, but also because these uh, dams uh, can store energy uh, from time to time, and we can use the energy when we need it, and it contributes with the regulatory capacity, which is getting more and more important as we introduce other power generation sources like solar and wind. Uh, another thing you have to ask yourself is, what is the reference condition at this place if you want to remove a dam? What are the his historical conditions? And can you, can you uh, try to, to get closer to those historical conditions again? Or is it uh, an ir uh, irreversible process, perhaps? And what happens if you remove the dam? Uh, of course, we know about the positive uh, impact or potential that you can that you can gain, but there are also other sides of a dam removal that you have to, to remember. I come back to that. And uh, last but not least, there are legal aspects that you have to consider. Legislation is a little bit different in different countries, but I think before you remove a dam uh, of, of a certain size, you need to consider the legal aspects and how it affects people living around the river, living around the dam. Actually, we are just now um, looking at the dam removal in, in a southeast river in Sweden uh, named Mörumson, uh, or River Mörum. I don't know, I'm not sure if it's the biggest dam removal uh, project in Sweden, maybe it is. Um, and we are positive to do this uh, for different reasons. Uh, this is a river with high natural values. It's a nature 2000 river. It's an important river for the Baltic salmon and uh, uh, it uh, contains quite many red-listed species. Um, the 
The project is co-financed uh, together with the uh, fresh, fresh, fresh and Seawater um, uh, Authority. And the main purpose is to improve the connectivity, which will increase the salmon and sea trout stock, not only at this place, but also further upstream in the river. But also other species, of course, that gain from this restoration. Uh, we also have in place um, in an international research engagement, together with people from Costa University, for instance. So we can see the situation before and after the dam removal. Uh, we hope this will be, take place next year, but of course we have this legal aspect, so we have to get the permission from the uh, Environmental Court in Sweden first, something that we hope to get this fall. And Andrew will tell you more about this case tomorrow. He's not in here now, but there he is. <laughs> yeah, so you can hear about this, this case tomorrow also. And finally, um, what is quite obvious when you start to look at a dam removal like this is that you face different challenges. Um, one thing that you might not think about, but people living close to this dam, they claim that the, the value of their houses will decrease. They want to be compensated for that. You have to think about erosion, sediment transport, also turbidity, especially as you remove the dam. What happens downstream, for instance? Uh, there is an issue with contamin contaminated soil uh, close to the dam, and uh, we are talking about how to monitor in, in case something happens there. And we ha have also red listed species living there today that will be affected if we remove the dam and decrease the surface of the water. So that's a very quick uh, presentation from my side. Um, please come back to me with questions if you have any, uh, any, and hopefully next year we can have a look at, at this place when something is going on there. So I'll leave it, we'll leave mm. it to you, Sara. Mm. So my name is Sara Sandberg. Thank you for inviting me. I'm with, uh, working with Fortum Hydropower. We have about 150 plants in Sweden and Finland. And the speech is on, as you can see, our perspective on dam removals. And as Johan mentioned, there are a number of um, benefits from our dams. That's where we have them. And this is from a Swedish perspective, but also outside of Sweden in a perhaps more ah, international view. Um, of course, what you think of on the top of the list is the possibility to store the water for energy production and flexible power production in terms of regulating the, the water. Um, but other aspects must be mentioned, even though this is a conference on removing dams, there are obviously uh, a number of uh, benefits. Um, controlling the flow along the rivers, uh, the uh, regulated um, areas, the reservoirs are used for recreation. Uh, this summer we noticed they were used for firefighting irrigation and human consumption, uh, consumption uh, as well. So what happens if you remove a dam? <coughs> you want to mention that as well. And uh, well, obviously there's a loss of production, but besides of that, there are a number of implications that you need to take into account when, when you're uh, suggesting a dam removal. And um, well, you can read them. Um, just to mention the, the bottom bullet here, bullet point uh, that there are actually also cultural values that should not be, be ignored um, in addition to the other ones. But yeah, having that said, the importance of, of current the dams that we have uh, for hydropower productions, etc. sometimes um, a dam removal is, is justified. And this is one example I will come back to. Uh, another one as well. Um, from our perspective, if we have made an analysis that this dam has a low contribution to the power system uh, from a regulating perspective, and there are high benefits for the environment, that could be um, a, a, a 
reasons for removing the dam. And we do have an ongoing program with several <laughs> dams uh, that are aimed for dam removals if permit is given. But if we notice that there's um, an interest, either locally or yeah, stakeholders have noticed that there are other <laughs> values, um, the other option could be of changing the ownership. Um, and when, if and when you decide to remove a dam, there could be additional work on improving uh, in, in, in relation, in, in nearby the, the dam. That's possible. And from the cases we have, um, um, we have experienced, the cooperation is uh, definitely a su success factor. So here's actually my last slide. Um, two cases so far. One is Akron, <laughs> uh, and um, like I said, the analysis was uh, came to the conclusion that the contribution from this dam seems to be low. And in addition to that, we saw suitable measures for to enhancing the to improving the environment uh, around the dam. Uh, this will in depth be presented by Axel Emanuelsson tomorrow. Axel works with um, Norconsult. Uh, and someone mentioned the importance of, of following up. Now we will see w what, what happened uh, and get a presentation from that case. Kolkhan is uh, another uh, dam that was shown in the picture. And um, just um, now it's an ongoing project by, um, on removing that dam. Uh, same analysis, the dam doesn't contribute very much to, the, to our electricity system in the Nordics. So, and the same, not exactly the same, but um, still there will be uh, measures there as well to improve the, the local conditions for fish. So those are the cases. Thank you very much. Thank you.